hello, hello, amazing people. Welcome back to the Live to Inspire podcast. Yours truly, Dave Coleman, episode 25. Today, we are talking about the difference between anxiety and fear, or anxiety and stress. Um, so as you know, I get most of these ideas um, for episodes in my, my weeks, uh, as I go through my daily life experiences, when I'm in the gym, uh, sometimes when I'm asleep, <laughs> sometimes when I'm out for a walk, just get random ideas and I think that um, they're, they're worth sharing and revisiting and, and hopefully triggering people's, people's minds to raise awareness as to different factors that are going on and, and potentially we do already know some of this stuff, but little reminders for you. So, difference between anxiety and fear. Um, as always, I think it's very important to start off with a clear definition as to what is what and what we're talking about. So anxiety really is a person's specific reaction to stress. So anxiety can last, uh, or anxiety tends to have longevity, whereas stress or, or fears tend to be, be quite short term. So um, if we think about that, um, fear or stress is a person's or a body's reactions to a threat, okay? So that's where we talk about things like fight and flight. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, effectively a nutshell. Um, in terms of its characteristics, anxiety is, is normally a persistent apprehension around situ a situation um, that really aren't actually that threatening. Uh, unlike stress, anxiety will persist even after a concern has passed. So um, we, we're, we're talking stressful situations or, or fearful events that can happen to us. Like I said, fight or flight, you either stay there, deal with that situation head on, or run away, disappear. <laughs> um, however your body responds, however your mind responds to that situation. Whereas anxiety will consistently, or will continue, sorry, to persist and be present in that mindset after the stressful uh, or the fearful event has happened. So um, again, I'm sure we are familiar with these with these emotions and these these feelings. But again, just to, to so that we're clear um, moving forward, with these um, my myself, uh, I'm sure potentially people listening to this episode uh, and the podcast, and even people that aren't. Um, are under stress and people do experience mental and physical illnesses um, almost daily, I suppose, really. Um, and, and it's about our fight and our journey to, to overcome those and, and to be the best possible version that we can be, which is my purpose in life, obviously, live to inspire. So some of the, the symptoms that we can experience under a fearful or stress or anxiety um, that there is a, a lot of interlinking or crossovers, I should say. Um, people get irritable, people get angry. Um, fatigue, fatigue's a massive one. So even myself, I had, a, I had a chat with Brett previously with our colitis. One of the factors we both suffer with quite a lot of is fatigue. Um, there's not much we can do about it, but if we are fatigued or if you are fatigued and you continue with your normal cycle, whilst you're fatigued, then that can lead to irritability, which then can create anxieties and fears, etc. So something to be aware of. Uh, any abnormal muscle pains, digestive troubles, like I just said about colitis, even things like Crohn's, IBS, uh, IBD. Um, and again, linked with fatigue, difficulty sleeping. So it's almost the opposite. So if you haven't read it yet, go out and read it, the book, Why We Sleep. Really, really fascinating. Talks all about everything related to sleep, obviously. Um, but a key factor for me is, is the circadian rhythms. And, you know, we tend to have four hour sleep cycles. So for most people we would normally sleep for eight hours a night. Um, that's normally enough for our body to, to fully recover and recharge. Um, so, they're the kind of stress, anxiety factors. Um, like I said, anxiety is more of a persistent and has longevity in terms of, of excessive worries. 
uh, that that just don't go away. So things to think about. Um, in terms of dealing with these factors, I was out um, on a walk. I was thinking, how do I disseminate this information to you beautiful people? And I struggled. I really struggled. I was thinking like, oh, yes, I'll do a podcast on it and that's great. But and, and it's one thing to say what anxiety is and what stress is and what fear is. But the, the important thing is the other side of it, right, is, is how do we deal with those, these factors? Um, and one of the ways uh, someone mentioned is uh, they said, check your barometer. I thought they got that wrong there. I thought check your thermometer, not barometer, because when you get uh, so for me, when when I certainly suffer from anxiety or, or social anxieties, I can feel my body temperature just goes off the chart, like it's it's freakishly hot, and and I start to sweat, and and all those sort of immediate responses, right? Um, so that's why I thought thermometer, but then. I thought, ah, oh, yeah, barometer makes sense, right? Because that deals with pressure. So how far do, does your barometer go? Like, does it go all the way up to 100? Do you, do you get start getting panicky at, at, at 10? Um, you, you know, just, just check where your barometer is. If you're feeling anxiety or, or fear or stress, check your barometer. Because <laughs> it can be a reflective thing, right? Um, having checked your barometer, Check your values, and that sounds a bit of a strange one, but if your values are out of alignment or a situation is is um, conflicting with your values, that can cause uh, anxiety and, and fear and, and certainly an element of stress, right? Your, your values are, are, are X and the situation is Y and, and nothing about it matches up, so that can cause some, some distress, um, which obviously move you're, you're moving away from your from your core values and, and your comfort zone so whatever it is it was well, say whatever it is when it comes to your values and your barometer try and find balance i think i mentioned this in a previous episode but try and find some balance within that okay so if we take it as a as a really broad spectrum rather than left to right maybe think of it as up and down if, if values are up here and you know wherever it is Try and restore the balance. Try and take something from one situation, take some of yours and go with a, a growth or an open mindset with those factors. And that can help to alleviate and overcome some of these anxieties as well as fears. Um, I alluded to previously as well about the, the Venn diagram, right? Where you've got a crossover, where, where the, the magic happens, as they say, um, the, the comfort zone, right? We, we like a little bit of stretch and challenge, but we, we don't want to go too far into the challenge section. If we're so far out of our comfort zone, it just doesn't feel right. So we always want to keep that one foot in the comfort zone. And if we can have another one in that stretch and challenge, that's a really, really good place. Um, fears will tend to occur when we're, like I said, out of that comfort zone and we're right into that stretch and challenge. So. Think about where you are and, and the event and the circumstances that you're in, in relation to your comfort zone. Um, one of the coping strategies that I that I found and, and obviously researching for you guys, a lot of people, um, much like social media, uh, subconsciously or consciously will will do things because of an immediate gratification. Okay, you post something, you get whatever, 10 likes, 100 likes, 1,000 likes, this person follows you, whatever. It's, it's immediate gratification. Now, one of the problems or the, the transitions or the translations with this is that when you are suffering from an anxiety and anxious event, sorry, uh, or, or you're feeling fear because you're out of your comfort zone, there are addictive things that we do subconsciously um, that we will do because we know we will get instant relief from it. Okay, that could be going for a drink, it could be getting some food, it could be a takeaway, it could be whatever. Whatever it is that you do subconsciously, you won't realize necessarily you're doing it, but it's an addictive thing and it will provide you with instant relief. 
Now that's great, but there's always a but. <laughs> um, the, the, the safety behaviors that those instant reliefs provide us with actually don't help us, right? Because they're, they're, they're providing positive reinforcement for that short, short event. So they're keeping us stuck in that moment rather than allowing ourselves to stay there rather than move away from it instantly we we need to you you should try and stay there process what's happening <clears throat> excuse me even if it's to this case of what can you control what can't you control write them down and then keep writing them down don't just write it down and throw it away if you keep revisiting it it will allow you to process what it is that has occurred, what you can control, what you can't. Um, that then reduces anxiety levels and just helps you to process and develop your emotional quotient in relation to those events and circumstances. So look for longevity in terms of the solution rather than immediate gratification is a big, big one. Um, and there's another one which sounds a bit weird, again, when I heard it, but, but makes a little bit of sense, right? So Malcolm Gladwell and his theory of the, the 10,000 hours or 10,000 times perfect practice creates the perfect performance. Can we apply that to anxiety or fear? I think we can, right? Stay with me on this one. <laughs> if you want to overcome anxiety, your anxieties, whatever they're associated with, or fears or stresses, try and deal with it in manageable doses every single day okay if you did that every single day think of the oh, I've forgotten his name that's annoying um, all the one percent right cumulative one percent growth as we know on a daily basis one percent is a manageable dose you can improve by 365 percent in a year of course you can okay one percent cumulative you can overcome it Okay, but like I said, it's, it's a manageable dose that will help you to alleviate anxiety barriers, stresses, external fears, internal fears, and allow you to mediate and process methods and your personal understanding that will allow you to grow and develop in relation to dealing with those factors. So I do appreciate um, my amble ramblings, as I like to call it, um, and, I, and I'm sure as... We all do, uh, at some point we have been anxious or we have suffered from some fears, um, whether it's fear of heights, whatever it is. You know, there's, couldn't even tell you all of them. Uh, and I do appreciate, I'm no expert on anxiety and I'm no expert on fear. Uh, it is just a, a short reminder, let's call it that, as to what potentially people can be dealing with. Um, I certainly have anxieties and I certainly have fears as well. So please, 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 and I mean this one, don't feel alone, okay? It's something I struggle with. Uh, I alluded to it previously. I always felt like I was the only one suffering. It's not true. There's hundreds, there's thousands, there's millions of people out there suffering just the same as you. And we're all here. We're all here to help each other. Um, which is, I guess, potentially from the analytics I get from this uh, podcast. Um, it's got a global reach now, and, and that, to me, just blows my mind because, selfishly, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to do this for myself. Um, and if I can help other people as well in the process, that's even better. Um, and if people like it, I mean, that's just the cherry on the top, right? So I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. And as always... Please remember, we will get there, if not immediately, eventually. Take care.